This is the Quad Questions QQ190. Uh, it has uh, sun sunshine, sunrise, sunshine, cicada, 20 amp ESCs on it, and uh, Emacs red bottom 2600 kV motors, uh, the RS2205, and uh, in a uh, what I th would think is relatively uneventful crash, it, uh, it smoked one of the ESCs and the motors uh, literally smoked. So uh, I am going to take a stab that maybe. I don't want to run this on five inch props. Maybe the five inch props were a little too much for it. Maybe I just got unlucky, but I have this, which needs built. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna transplant this whole thing over to this whole thing and save myself the trouble of doing a whole brand new build. If you ever buy battery straps, buy the battery straps with this rubberized stuff on it. It makes a huge difference. A little tip. You should not use pliers on your SMA connectors you will over tighten them and you will uh, you'll damage the threads the brass threads are really really soft and the fact that you see me doing it there's good reason for it but I shouldn't do it either and I want to let you know that that's a bad practice the reason I'm doing it is because in order to keep this from wiggling side to side and getting into the props, I have taken some silicone tape, which I don't think is... This is like the one great use for silicone tape I've found, and that is to create... Hang on, I'm almost there. There we go. To create little grommets like this to help uh, pressure seal joints like that, that's not going anywhere. It's not going to wiggle. So I was very careful not to damage the threads when putting it on, but it was a little tighter than I could go, finger tight. So I used the pliers a little bit. But that's not good, and you shouldn't do it. Now, in another video I posted, I talked about how neat this build was and how easy to work with it was. And we're going to find out just how true that really is when we see how easy it is, or hard it is, to transplant over to the Flynoceros frame, the Canis M4. I'm probably just going to leave this camera here because it's a little bit of a hassle to uninstall the whole thing. I might not. I might move it over, though. I don't know. And here is here's where the magic happens. We are going to need to take this apart and re-solder the new ESC. I think I'm going to do that here on this frame before making the transplant. Mm. The canvas is smaller, so everything's going to move in. So I feel okay that I'm not going to run out of wire, run out of space. Always have some place to put your loose screws and stuff so you don't lose them. For working with these big pads like this, I like to use a little bit of a heavier tip to hold the heat a little better. And I'm going to need to get at the underside of the ROSD because I've run the wires underneath. Let's go ahead and take these these off as well to make some more room for us to work with. This is a um, 730 seconds ratchet. It fits these M3 standoffs just fine if you ever have a little trouble getting a grip on them. Obviously if you go crazy with it you'll strip them, but just don't go crazy. So this is going to be a little tricky desolder just this one without getting the others. There we go. What I do when I'm desoldering like that is I try to apply heat relatively high up on the wire that I'm soldering. So not close to the base, but close to the insulation. 
and then that hopefully flows down and melts, sort of preferentially melts the solder that's on this wire and not the solder on the rest of the joint. And as I do it, I apply a little bit of pressure to kind of peel it away from the joint as the solder flows. And that helps me get just this one wire off and not any of the others. Yeah, so I soldered this up after the board was installed. I'm going to need to remove these screws in order to get this board lifted. The, there's not enough slack in the wires to lift this out without removing these screws. So You do not want the RROSD flush against the carbon fiber or it will short. And then bad things will happen. I think I'm going to have to remove uh, some of these motors to get at the underside of the RROSD. So that's no problem. They're going to have to come off anyway. May as well come off now. Yeah, so you can see I haven't soldered to the underside of the ROSD because I didn't like having the big blobs of solder in the big joint there that might short out. But I have run the wires underneath. So in order to really get this fixed correctly, I'm going to need to get under there. There's definitely no way I'm going to get that off by itself. It's just on the, it's on the underside of the joint. So I'm going to need to desolder most of this joint. That's a shame. I'm also going to need to be really careful about this red wire here. It was really tight to get that done. I'm going to need to be really careful that I don't um, accidentally burn it. off. There we go. I know I made that look easy. You may not even have really seen what I did. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky solder and I'm just going to be even trickier getting it back on. I think I'm going to go ahead and put this wire back in place before resoldering the next, the repair just so it doesn't get sketchy. It doesn't get moved around and lose its place while I'm working. Let's get a little solder on that. Joshua from the future here to tell you that, uh, that I did not hit that with enough heat to properly flow the solder. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to flow the solder enough to make the wire stick. And then after I'm done putting all the wires on this great big joint, I'm going to hit it with a bunch of heat and reflow all the solder in the whole joint to, to make it a good, good, strong joint. So I'm just sort of tacking the wire in place right now. And if it seems like I didn't hold the soldering iron on that joint nearly long enough, you're absolutely right. I have a video coming up uh, in the next week or so about this technique, and you'll hear more about it there. For my replacement motor and my replacement ESC. Now, some people would argue that I should be installing this on the new frame instead of the old one because what if the fit is different? Well, I'd like to keep everything sort of consistent and symmetrical. So I'm going to install this on the new frame and then transfer it over. And that way, whatever I have to do to make everything fit on the new frame, I'll do the same thing to this one. I sort of care more about the symmetry than I do anything else. So I've got a little bit of fresh solder on there, just to just so I'm ready to solder the motor wires. I should again, if you're not confident with your soldering skills, don't try to do this because um, you can damage the ESC. You can uh, you can pull the pads off, whatever. Um, I, I've had one at least one complaint on my comments by somebody who said, "Dude, you made it look easy," and I damaged my flight controller or my receiver trying to do this. 
um, which I take no responsibility for. I mean, you know, you're the one holding the soldering iron, but I should at least say, if you're not confident, please, there are other ways to go about this without direct soldering. So we'll get this tacked into place just with a little piece of foam tape, get the ESC in place, and I'll cut these wires. So that's pretty much how I like them to be. Maybe one to two millimeters of tinned stub there, ready to solder. And I'm gonna just check the dry fit. Looks good. Okay. Well, I apologize that you couldn't see any of that, but I have, I'm, I'm just old enough that I need to take my glasses off to do up close work and uh, a little difficult to to shoot and sh show the work at the same time there you go so I've got the black wire coming underneath and the red wire going over the top black wire is going to go underneath like so Got a little extra solder on there. That's okay. I'm going to use it when I go onto this joint. I'm going to really make sure I see that solder flow. And you can see that the solder has flowed together on the new line and, and also flowed down onto the pad. So it's not a cold joint. It's got good contact all the way through. So there's the black one. And now the red. We'll do the red. And I've got my power here running underneath my signal, my camera, and my. So I'm just going to keep that consistent. try to give myself a little bit of slack here to work with because I am going into an unfamiliar location. Also the the Flynoceros frame has a little bit more room to work with than the QQ frame so I feel like I can be a little bit generous. Whenever I tin, I always tin over the table and not over the board because a little spatter from the solder can get into the board and damage it. So anytime I'm going to tin, I tin over the table. So likewise, that's done. Again, good flow on the solder. Not a cold joint. Feel pretty comfortable with it. So now the new ESC is hooked up and powered. And um, then I just got to do the signal wire. And I try and run my signal wires kind of in a bundle. I'm just going to wrap this one around there. Yeah, that's okay. Um, this one's got to come off. And this soldering iron tip is way too heavy and big for working with those little uh, pads. So we're going to pause here while I we switch tips. So for these tiny little pads, a, a thin tip like this or maybe a small chisel tip if you're very careful is, is what I would recommend. I wouldn't go any heavier than a, dang it, 
I wouldn't go any heavier than like a really small chisel tip because it's just going to be so wide you're going to be hitting stuff with heat that doesn't need it and it's going to be really difficult to control the heat. Um, if you are a master solderer you can get it done but you're likely to end up making you're much more likely to make mistakes and, and damage things. And so I've just got a little dollop of fresh shiny solder on there to help the new joint. I'm going to make the signal wire a little shorter than the ground wire because the signal pad is a little closer. Again, I'm going to lay them to the side while I tin them because I don't want to get any spatters on anything. And I'll put my head in the way while I solder, which is completely useless for you, I'm sorry to say. I haven't burned back too much of the insulation, this terrible plastic insulation. Burned back a little bit there, but it's not exposing anything that would be a problem. It would create a short or anything like that. My solder joints look like they flowed well. I'm getting good contact. Some people will criticize the fact that I haven't put the wires through the through hole. I'm just soldering to the top of them. And you're correct that technically that does not make as strong a joint. Unfortunately, especially with these wires, it's not always easy. For example, you can't always easily get to the underside uh, to stick the wire through and solder from the underside. And especially when you're doing a repair like this, there's often already solder on the hole. And you're, I find that I'm more likely to damage the pads by trying to clean the solder out of the hole than I am to, you know, affect. So this has never been a problem with me in terms of vibration and joints breaking loose. As long as it's got good flow, I feel like it's more than acceptable. So there we go. We're wired up. A good visual inspection to make sure that there's no short of, for example, up uh, ground to, yeah, see, I mean, you're not going to be able to see this, I don't think. There are just a few little threads of wire here that are look like they might be contacting this fi this 5 volt pad. So I'm just going to clean those out of the way. And a good check with a multimeter to ensure that you've got no connectivity between signal and 5 volt is well worth doing. So let's do that. So I'm going to put the multimeter on continuity mode. That's this mode. And in continuity mode, when you have continuity they'll beep. Now I'm going to put continuity on the 5 volt pad. Now all the 5 volt pads have continuity with each other because it's just one 5 volt bus so that's normal but I don't want to see any continuity between 5 volt and signal and I don't or 5 volt and ground and I don't. The signal pads have to be checked individually because they do not have continuity to each other so great no continuity there that's good that's what we want. And it's always decent to check, and I sh this should be fine, but it's always decent to also check for continuity between the main discharge leads. And I do not have the, that. If you screwed up your soldering here on your PDB, you could accidentally have bridged them, and that means when you plug a battery in, you'll short the battery and potentially have something dramatic happen. That is also why the first time I solder a power copter after I've been working on it, I always use a smoke stopper. Always. If you screwed up the soldering and you have a short, this will save you from, at the very least, it'll save you from creating a fire with your battery, and it may save your copter from damage. If you plug in and this lights up, it means you're pulling more than a couple amps, and you shouldn't be normally. So. This is great. Or you can use a current limited bench power supply if you have one.
you just set the max current to about an amp and if you plug in and you hit that limit when you first plug in and the ESC start you'll hit that limit briefly but if you plug in and you consistently hit that limit then you got a short and something isn't right um, don't try to run your copter off a of bench power supply though because the braking from the ESC's will damage the power supply and that's not good okay everything is now wired up now we need to remove all the electronics and transfer them over to the flynoceros here you go here are the guts of the copter all pulled out and ready to transplant into a different copter and this is why I feel like this build technique is is so effective it's really rather easy ish to do this it's not too difficult so I'm really pleased with how it's come out let's take a look at this frame and see how it's going to go together I'll just take that off for now. Um, so, I know that we need these screws to go through the bottom, just like before. And we've got these little plastic nuts that I'm using as spacers and to retain these screws. Make sure I've got the side that's the front correct. Yeah, that's the front. Oh, doggone it. Guys, I've, uh... <laughs> I can't remember which way the motor is. Uh, I think I've got it like this. Yes, the battery's coming out the side. And the board faces this way. I'm going to loosen these a little bit to give them a little bit of play to make it easier to set the board down on top of them. Just lining up the screw holes exactly straight can be a little tricky and can make the board bind up. Just checking that all the wires are on the right on the correct side of the, the screw of how I want them so they're not gonna bind up or get stuck or anything. And it looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the spacers on top here just to hold everything together. Okay, now I'm not gonna tighten that down yet. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about how my motors are going to go because my motors need to come in and obviously that's not going to fly so I wonder if I can put a twist on them no how can I shorten this up Oof. that is going to be a real challenge I can cut the motor wires even shorter Yeah, well, maybe that's what I need to do. I really am going to ruin a motor, though, if I screw this up. So what I'm doing is I'm removing the heat shrink here, where the enamel wire that actually makes up the windings transitions to the silicon wire that's used for the motor headers for the soldering. Um, this is going to remove some of the support in this area, but I hope that because the motors are relatively well now, there's not a lot of room for stuff to move around in here. I hope that that's not going to create a reliability issue. But removing that heat shrink lets the wires sort of shrink or bend a little tighter. It means I don't have to resolder and shorten up all those wires, which um, given I've got very little silicon wire left at all, I really don't want to do. You'll also notice that I'm putting this M3 tape under here, this double-sided tape, foam tape, under here, uh, under the ESCs. Even though the ESCs are wrapped in... Uh, electrical tape individually so it's not needed for electrical isolation it's just there for padding for vibration isolation that's always a good idea and here we go here it is the electronics are all transplanted 
Um, all in all, I'd say it's been maybe mm, maybe a couple, maybe two hours of work. Uh, I know that might seem excessive to some of you, but I was uh, I was recording through it and I wasn't working straight through. But I had to solve a few little issues, like the issues with how to do the motors. I don't love having this sharp bend in the motor wires. It's silicon wire, so that's good. That's going to help. And you'll notice it is not actually bending at the joint. But I don't love it. But the alternative is, the, none of the alternatives are very palatable to me, so I'm going to stick with it. This is really a case where the method of running the ESC wires or the motor wires underneath the ESC and then back around again would have really been perfect. But I had already cut these wires and it just wasn't an option. So that's what we're going to go with. It'll probably be fine. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video. If you stuck around this long, <laughs> congratulations. You must really like this kind of content. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Happy flying.